Okay, so today we're going to create and then animate an infographic in After Effects using pretty much nothing but simple shapes like circles. Then we're going to cover how just basic animation techniques like changing the position, scale, color, rotation and opacity of these shapes can be used in conjunction with number counters to create simple but visually striking animated infographics. So we're going to start by creating a new project and then we're going to create a new composition and we're just going to call this composition something meaningful and we're going to set it up as 1920 by 1080 with 25 frames per second. 30 seconds will do us just fine and have a background color of black and click OK. So the first thing now we're going to do is create a solid layer. So we'll come up here to the top where it says layer. We're going to go layer new solid for a solid layer and our window appears here and we can select which color we want our solid background color to be. I'm going to select this deep cyan solid color and click OK. That automatically adds it to our composition. We're just going to hit V on the shortcut key so that we can then deselect that background layer and I tend to lock it just down here in the composition panel by clicking this little padlock symbol just so that we don't inadvertently select it at any point during our animation or when we're modifying layers. So most of what we're going to be doing today is going to be based on circles. So we're going to come up to our tools menu up the top here and we can either select the shortcut key Q or we can click on this rectangle at the top here and just come down to the ellipse tool just here. We'll select that. This will allow us to draw a circle. So if we come to our main preview plane, just click and start drawing, we'll be able to draw an ellipse. And if we hold the shift key once we've started drawing, that will create a nice symmetrical circle for us. So we'll just release there to create our first circle. Yours might appear different colors and it might have a stroke, but that's not a problem. We're going to modify those now. So let's just hit V as a shortcut key so that we can select and move and reposition this shape as we want to. If we just want to centrally align it in the middle of the composition, we can come over to the right hand side here where it should say align. If you can't see this, just come up to window and make sure this align option is selected there for this option to appear. And if we select align, we can centrally and vertically align this object in the middle of our composition. Now we're going to increase the stroke width and set the fill color to transparent. So to do that, we just need to come up to the fill and stroke options at the top here. And if we select the word fill, not the black square or the color square, just select the word fill. And we want to select this white box with a red line through it. And that will turn it transparent. Click OK. And then on our stroke width, we just want to scrub this all the way across until it's around about the size that we want our animated infographic to be. So whatever we'd like, I'll just choose 100 pixels. You can also click this and enter a value here manually. And you can also change the stroke color by selecting the box next to the word stroke and just selecting whichever color you want. We'll stick with white and I'll just zoom back out. We'll come down to our shape layer and our composition panel that we've just created. And we know it's a shape layer, not just because it's called shape layer, but because it's represented by this little star symbol here. If we select that layer and hit enter, we can then just rename it so that we can keep track of what we're doing. And then with this layer selected, if we just come down to the composition panel, we'll see it says add here and there's a little play symbol next to it. If we click that play symbol and scroll down, we should see an option called trims paths. So we'll select that. And this trim paths is what's going to allow us to animate the circle. So we can see our trim paths has now appeared down here. And if we scroll this out, we'll see a start and an end option with stopwatch next to it. And these stopwatches are going to allow us to lay down some keyframes to produce the animation. So if we scroll back out, and if we just scroll these sliders here to the left and the right, we'll see that it reveals or hides the section of the circle. So with our time slider back at zero, we're just going to hit our starter stopwatch at 0%. We're going to come up to our time counter here, hit plus 25, 25 frames per second, that adds a second to our animation. And then we're going to hit this little diamond symbol over here to lay down our second keyframe. So if we just drag our time slider back to the beginning and select this first keyframe that we laid down here and it will turn blue. And then we're going to come over to this slider and this count here and we'll set it to whatever we want it to be to start with. I'm going to set this to 100% so that none of it's visible. Then if we scroll our time slider across to our second keyframe, holding the shift key so that it snaps to it, select it so that it turns blue, and then we can turn this to whatever percentage we want it to represent. So with the start stopwatch, if we wanted this circle to represent 75%, we just need to type in 25% to make it up to 100. Conversely, if we had the starter stopwatch set to zero, we could modify the end stopwatch to go to the actual percentage that we wanted it to represent, but this would come from the opposite direction. So we set the value relative to which direction we want the circle to animate. So because we want this circle to animate going counterclockwise, we'll have the start stopwatch at the beginning at 100 here, and we're going to animate it through just 25%. So then we're going to highlight these two keyframes, right click on them and go easy ease just to add a little bit more sort of smoothness to the animation, deselect and we can preview. Okay, perfect. 
So we'll just drag that time slider across to the last keyframe. And now if we wanted to add a counter, for example, in the center of this that animated at the same time as the circle circumference animate, we can just come up to our text layer up the top here or hit Command or Control T for the shortcut key on the keyboard. We'll just select that. And then in the center of the circle somewhere, it doesn't matter to where at this exact moment, we'll just click and then put a placeholder in. It doesn't really matter what you put in at this stage. We're gonna modify it in a sec anyway. Then we'll come down to our composition pane. We'll just hit enter and rename this to circle counter. Hit enter, that just helps us keep track. And then over here on the right hand side, we can change the properties of this counter. So for example, its size, if you can't see this again, we just come up to our window and go to the character option. The character window opens on the right hand here. You can choose the different text options, so bold, italic, your fonts. So we're gonna set this to font size of 120. And then if we come back down to our circle layer and we just toggle this switch down and we toggle our text option down, we should see this option here, which says source text with a stopwatch next to it. So if we hold the Alt key down and then click that source text stopwatch, we should see that this expression window opens up with this text already propagated. Now, if we come over to our effects and presets, and if again, if you can't see this, come up to window and just choose effects and presets. And in here, we're just gonna type in slider control. And if we select our slider control and drop that on top of our circle counter text layer, we should see the effects option appear down here. We'll just toggle that down, toggle down our slider control. And then this little curly pick whip symbol just here next to our source text layer, we're just gonna drag that down and place that onto our slider. And we should see now that the expression is propagated with different text. So we're just gonna modify this slightly so that we can control the number of decimal places and add a percentage symbol after the counter. So to do that, we're just gonna type in exactly dot value dot to fixed with a capital F. And then inside the parentheses, we're gonna put a zero to represent zero decimal places. You can set whatever number of decimal places you want. And then hit a plus, open up some quotes and just put the percentage marker in there. You don't need to press enter, but if we just click in the preview pane, we'll now see that we have a number with a percentage symbol after it, currently represented by zero. If we come down to the slider control on our effect setting in our text layer, and we scroll this to the right hand side, we'll see that the number goes up with the percentage symbol after it with no decimal places. So I'll just set that back to zero for now. And with this text layer selected, select the circle layer. So with these now both selected, we'll see that the align to layers option says selection. So that means we're gonna align the text layer and the shape layer to one another rather than to the composition. So now we can just align these vertically and horizontally so that the counter appears centrally within the circle as it animates. And if we come back over to our circle counter layer, we deselect the layers, select the circle counter layer, and we've got this option here that says parent link with another one of these little swirly pickwick symbols. Symbol on the circle counter and drag it on top of the circle shape layer. That means now that when we move these objects around, they move with each other. So as we move the circle shape layer, the counter will move with it. So now we just need to make sure that our counter counts up to the same number that's represented by our circle circumference. So we'll just drag our time slider back to the beginning make sure that our slider here is set to zero and we'll just lay down our first keyframe by pressing the slider control stopwatch. Then because our circle circumference is animated over a second, which is 25 frames, we'll come up to our counter, hit plus 25 to move our time slider across to one second. And then we'll modify the slider percentage here to say 75. We'll hit enter and that will lay down our second keyframe here. We'll see that the counter's changed to 75%. We can just highlight these two keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And if we drag our time slider back to the beginning, click off to deselect and hit the space bar, we'll see the counter counts up to 75% at the same time as the circumference animates to the same value. So if we wanted to have multiple circles with multiple counters, for example, we could do this nice and easily. So we can select our circle counter layer and our circle shape layer, hit Command C or Control C, and then Command V or Control V on the keyboard to duplicate them. You won't see this duplicated layer initially just because they're directly on top of one another. But if we select our circle two layer and hit our P for our position options to open out, we can move this to the left hand side or up and down in order to change its position. And we'll see that we do in fact have two circles and two counters. Notice as well that because we've duplicated these layers, this duplicated counter is also paired to this duplicated circle. So as we move the dimension, the second circle counter moves with it. So if we couldn't fit these all in our composition, we needed to just resize them. We can do that nice and easily. Just select one of the layers, hold shift to, and then select them all. And then if we hit the S for the scale options to open up, we can then just scrub these down all at the same time to rescale everything. 
Then if we wanted to reposition everything and make sure it was nice and central in the composition, we just select circle two and circle one, come over to our align options again, and we just hit align vertically, that will align them vertically, and then we can drag them and reposition them to where we wanted on the composition. If we wanted to change the color of one of the circles and the counters, we can do that nice and easily. Just click on it and come up and change the stroke settings up here so we could change it to a red or to a green color, whatever we wanted to choose. Click OK. And then in order to change the counter to the same color, just select it down here in our composition layer, come across to our character options over here, grab the little eyedropper symbol and click the green color to make it the same color here. Or you could choose obviously a different color using the color swatch panel here by double clicking on it and selecting your color. To modify what this second circle and counter count up to, all we have to do is open out the properties, make sure that our time slider is over the top of the keyframe that corresponds to the one that we want to edit. So we're opening out our slider control here. Here's our keyframe for our 75% white counter. And say, for example, we wanted this to represent 50% instead. We can just hit 50 and hit enter. That will modify this existing keyframe because we've selected it and edited it rather than laying down a new one. And then if we come down to our circle two layer, again, let's just open out those properties by clicking the little arrow, hit contents, come down to our trim paths. And here we're just gonna make sure that we've selected this keyframe that already exists. And then we're gonna change this parameter to 50%. Now, if we scrub that back to the beginning, we can see that they both count up to the values that we've set them to. We can easily add transparency. So if we just hit control A while we're down in the composition panel and then hit T on the shortcut key, this opens up the transparency settings for all of our layers at the same time. So if we just hit this little stopwatch with all of the layers selected, that'll lay our first keyframe down for all of the layers, so both circles and both counters. And we'll just drag this slider all the way to zero. So we set that first keyframe to 0% opacity. Then if we come up to our time counter, hit plus 25 to move the time slider along. And then we drag this time slider across to 100%. That'll lay down our second keyframe for all of our layers. We can highlight all of the keyframes there. Right click when they're blue, keyframe assistant and easy ease. Now, if we drag that time slider back to the beginning, deselect everything and hit spacebar, we'll see that they appear at the same time as they count up. If we wanted to stagger the animation so that one counter appears before the other, we can do that too. We just make the time sliders back at the beginning. Say we wanted to offset them by half a second. Let's just come up to our counter, hit plus 12 for 12 frames, so roughly half a second. Then if we select the layers that we want to appear second in our composition pane, and then hit U on the keyboard, we'll see that all of the keyframes open up and we can then drag and highlight these keyframes for these layers that we want to appear second and then move them along to where the time slider is, hold shift so that the keyframes snap to that position. And now if we hit spacebar, we see that they're staggered in their appearance. So armed with just these basic skills, you can actually create quite complex, visually appealing infographics like these. You can nest or segment different circles to represent proportions by adjusting the scale or trim paths options of different shape layers, or add in additional graphics of a study species or the subject of your infographic to help tell the story visually. Just get creative and start playing around with all the different options. Okay, well thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all the other videos in the playlist to get other hints and tips and sort of animation tutorial basics. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in.